to support a whole BC working day. All we need is a good breakfast. In Hong Kong, bread is always our first priority. Different types of bread give different textures. Some of them are soft, while some of them are quite hard. Do you know what is the difference between these two? Let's ask them. Um, obviously, this one is harder and this one is softer. Okay. Um, do you know why? Mm, no. 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 But why? The answer is easy. That's because of yeast. Yeast is usually acted in the progress of bread making for softening the texture. Under different conditions, such as temperature, carbohydrates, and etc., the activity of the yeast changes and it gives different texture to the bread. How do the yeast activity changes under different temperatures in the presence of different carbohydrates? Today, we come to a laboratory and conduct an experiment to verify it. Our hypothesis is that. The aerobic respiration rate is the highest under 35 degrees Celsius. Let's come to our procedures. To conduct our experiment, we will need three measuring cylinders of 500 milliliters for glucose, sucrose, and bread flour. Put 10 grams of each carbohydrate in measuring cylinders separately. Also. Add 50 ml distilled water. Then swirl to make sure all the carbohydrates are dissolved in distilled water. Add 1 gram of dry yeast into each measuring cylinder. And just mix it well. This step is to make sure all the yeast are activated and evenly distributed in the carbohydrate solution. Record the initial level of the solution. Put three measuring cylinders into a constant 35 degrees Celsius water bath and start the timer immediately. Now, all we have to do is to wait. For every five minutes, we measure the rise of the foam in each measuring cylinder. After 65 minutes, we get all the results of the level of foam rise in glucose, sucrose, and bread flour solution. Similarly, we do that again for room temperature 30, 40, and 45 degrees Celsius. After all steps, we input the data collected and plot graphs to represent the results. Let's take a look on what we have done. We use the rising foam level as an indicator to show the rate of aerobic respiration. The higher the foam level, the higher the rate. At 35 degrees Celsius, the yeast ferment glucose, sucrose and bread flour by aerobic respiration. The foam rise up to 108, 92 and 2 ml respectively. This graph shows the yeast activity throughout our experiment. Yeasts were active when they were put in glucose and sucrose at 35 degrees Celsius. However, the yeast remained inactive for almost 16 minutes in bread flour solution. More or less no foam was produced. What about the activity at different temperatures? Is the foam production the greatest at 35 degrees Celsius? Obviously, the yeast activity is the highest at 35 degrees given that they were in glucose or sucrose solution. They did not really react at all temperatures when they were put in bread flour solution. From the above comparison, our hypothesis the rate of aerobic respiration is the highest under 35 degrees Celsius is valid. The yeast activity is affected by temperatures. Probably, 
35 degrees is the optimum temperature for yeast to ferment. So, how is our result related to the softness of bread? Remember, we have added baker's yeast when we made our bread. Now, you are going to see an animation of how yeast functions in bread. This is a dough. The pink little spots represent the yeast. We mix the dough and the yeast to ensure they are evenly distributed. Now, let's take a closer look of how the yeast make the dough larger and larger. Again, the pink spots are the yeast. The green triangles are the carbohydrates. Once they are mixed, the yeast uptakes the carbohydrates for aerobic fermentation. Carbon dioxide is released. Therefore, the dough expands by carbon dioxide gases, and the dough is getting larger and larger. Dough containing many bubbles is soft. The more carbon dioxide released to the dough, the softer it is. If you want to make this, leave the dough at 35 degrees Celsius. If you want to make this, leave the dough at 22 degrees Celsius. Then you get bread with different textures. After listening to our explanation, do you understand why they have different textures?